Okay, um, well, welcome back, Craps Nation and YouTube and whoever else stumbles upon this. Um, been listening to uh, uh, Vince Armonti's YouTube channel for, I don't know, probably about two hours while I'm cleaning up in, in the basement. And I'm like, you know what? I got to take a break. And you know what? I need to get part five of this thing out. So welcome to part five of the live fantasy craps and OBS and KPI and YouTube tutorial. Um, we left off. Let's uh, let's get rid of this. How do I get rid of this? Uh, turn the image off. We don't need that anymore. Now you can see my screen, but we don't want to see this OBS. We want to see this OBS. So. We created a bunch of shooter scenes. Uh, there's F shooter two, shooter three, shooter four, shooter five. Oh, shooter five. And then back to shooter one, two, and so on. Um, what we're missing here are a few components. Um, want to add in the YouTube chat. And we want to add in... What's the other thing I want to add in? Oh, um, a stat screen. Let's uh, let's see, stat screen, YouTube chat, and shooter history. So get the last, you know, two, three, four, five shooters, however many you want to put you know stuff into here, and um, yeah, we'll we'll see what we're gonna do there. Now I've already set this up in a scene. Um, but what I want to go do, what I want to do, I'm going to refer back to it because there's some things that I just can't ever keep straight in my head, but I want to add it to here. So let's start with our main layout. And I want to bring in on the main layout, a dummy video source. Well, not really a dummy video source, but I want to bring in a, uh, one of the tables. So we're going to add a source or it'll be another scene and let's just add in my overhead camera okay there's that my overhead camera doesn't seem to be live i wonder why that is um let's deactivate that and reactivate it do we get a live image Come on, I know you're plugged in. Well, shoot. HD webcam. It is plugged in, I think. Well, I don't know. Maybe something else is consuming it. Um. Huh. Hey, there we go. So these are some of the things um, <clears throat> dealing with your hardware and whatnot you'll run into. And before you go freaking out, let me get the phone off there. That's glaring. Um, that's glaring too. Ew. Get that out of the way. So um, before you go freaking out when you have weird things happen like that, just deactivate it, reactivate it, up, unplug it, plug it back in. Um, see if you can't do that sometimes you might have to remove it sometimes you might even have to reboot your computer and or close other applications because the camera can only be used by one application at a time which i think is stupid but that's the way it is so we'll do that so back here to the main layout we've added our overhead camera it's on top of everything really don't want that so let's right click on it go to order and we're gonna move it to the bottom there. Now, we wanna add some other things to it and we're gonna end up covering up part of this. So what I wanna do is edit a transform. Let's transform it and edit the transform. Um, I wanna make this, I'm gonna lock the size in at 1280 by 720. And we fine tune this later, but 1280 by 720 will be perfectly fine for right now. And then let's just move this over so it's somewhat in position. And 
And that looks pretty good right there for, again, for the moment. And we may play with these and see what we can do. In fact, let's snap this out a little bit. There's that. There's that. Good enough. And let's add some more stuff to this. All right. So we want to add the, let's, uh, I need more room to work here. All right. Let's add the shooter history. So the fastest, easiest way to do that is to grab our KPI sheet, all right? And we are going to right click on it. We will copy, then we'll come back in here and paste a reference. That grabs our KPI sheet, puts it on top of everything again. That's fine for the moment. And then we're gonna right click on it. We are going to group the selected items. And we'll call it KPI Shooter History. All right, on the KPI Shooter History, let's move that down with the other KPI stuff. That'll work. And then we are going to go ahead and start cropping it. So we're gonna right click, well, you got it selected, you click filters right here, or you can right click and go to filters. It all works the same. So on our filter screen, we're going to come in, add uh, ba -ba 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 -ba, the crop and pad. Leave the name alone, just because we don't need to, need to worry about the name too much. And we'll just come in here and set some initial values, get it somewhat close and workable. Right is going to be about, wow, 1,600, 1,700 works good. Bottom, let's say 300. All right, that's a good place to start. Now, the top, I want to save some of this, a lot of this space, most of this space. I want to save that for the YouTube chat. So you can see right here. We're consuming quite a bit of screen right there because we got what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 34, 14 shooters in the history. And we don't necessarily need all that. We're really just kind of curious, at least I am, because um, as soon as somebody sevens out, you lose the shooter count and you're like, wait a minute, how many, sh how many rolls did he get? So maybe just the last two or three, maybe four of them, um, we can play with that. So let's bring this top down considerably and what does that give us that gives us six so let's bring it down a little bit more let's do 800 all right that's four of them and now we can fine tune that so you see there at the top of the right above where it has silent shooters name i just want the bare minimum to get that one black bar Beautiful. Now on the left, we're gonna increase our crop until we get rid of that magenta. Same thing on the right. And this time I'm just holding my mouse button down, letting it go. Say go, 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 close. Now we'll just do it one click at a time. Same thing on the bottom. We'll just go, 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 go. Keep going, keep going, beautiful. We're close. Now we just go to click at a time. There's still a trace of magenta there and boom, gone. Now we can close that. Oh, and maybe we don't care, you know, hey, George was the 20th shooter. Maybe we don't care about that. We want to tighten that up some more. So the left, we can go ahead and get rid of all that too. And again, this, this is all just personal preference. And that's one of you. So I throw in all that information and then we can turn around and take it all back out with very little. Oh, we got a trace of magenta there on the right. So we'll kick that one more pixel. And I think we are good. So let's close that. Boom. And now we have our shooter history. And it's it's just it's right there. Um kind of snapped into place there. And we will call that good. Now, now that we have a little bit of information over here, we can adjust this to take up just a hair more space, make that video just a little bit bigger, and that looks really good. 
All right. Now, YouTube chat. Um, this is this is probably one of the most um, painful parts of doing this, and I will kind of well, I'll try to show you why. Oh, hey, look, there's Vince's video. Uh, Vince Armenti. I want to get. I want to figure out this uh, Windcraps Pro that he's been using. It looks like it is. Looks like it's pretty slick for doing some simulations and betting strategies and and whatnot. I'm gonna have to give that a shot. Anyway, so I go to YouTube. Where's my YouTube? Hey, there's YouTube. And we are going to let's go to create. We're gonna hit the go live. And if you've done your YouTube in the past, you know what this screen here is all about. But we are going to figure out how to incorporate YouTube chat here. And this is, there are plugins, there are third party sites where you can give them your YouTube credentials. They'll log in when you do a live video and then process that chat for you and then feed it back to the OBS. And you don't ever have to worry about or change it that much. I don't know exactly how it works simply because. I don't use, I tend to shy away from giving third party sites access to my stuff. It just, I don't like it. And well, that's the end of the story there. So from the YouTube studio, we are ready to go live. As soon as we hit the live button, this will start streaming. This is the live chat here. What we're going to do is click these, click the little uh, dot dot menus, pop out the chat. Once that chat has popped out, you can see that we have a URL for the chat. So we can highlight that, right click, copy, and close that. We don't need it anymore. That'll pop back in, get rid of our browser window. And now we are going to add a browser source. Browser. Oh, before we do that, I'm curious as to how wide this is. So let's look at the transform, edit transform. So we've decided that this is going to be 449. Let's go ahead and make it 450 pixels wide, just so that we're kind of pixel perfect. Not that that matters. Close that. Now let's add a browser source and we'll call it YouTube chat. Hit OK, and it wants a URL, so we'll paste that in there. I use Control V. You could also right click and paste. Lots of ways to copy and paste width. So we already checked our width. We know it's going to be 450, and 600 is what's there. That looks pretty good. Let's give it a shot and see what happens. Let's hit OK, and that loads up the browser chat. And yeah, 600 looks decent. Um, let's look at the transform on that again, and we'll just kind of tweak it and fine tune it. So transform, uh, ba, ba, ba. there we go. We have to select it first, then we can go to transform, edit, transform. Our top position is 381. If we do a quick, I don't have a calculator, but yes, I do. Let's do, what is it? Uh, we are 1080 tall minus 381 equals 699. So let's go to, yeah, let's just go to set, uh, 699 pixels tall. So go ahead and close that. Um, come in here, properties, and we'll do 699. We'll hit OK, and boom, that fills up this whole thing. Now, one of the things you notice, this will work just like it is. Um, however, you'll if you notice, it's got this input. So, you know, it's just like if you're chatting. So we're taking up space there. We got this little warning, the top chat, all that junk. This is where cascading style sheets come into play. And this is where I struggle because there's not, there is some information out there. Cascading style sheets is how websites are designed, how what controls you know the look and the feel 
of a web page or a part of a web page. Um, I will try to remember to provide a link to this, but let's go to my scratch layout. And you see I applied a style sheet that got rid of some of the stuff, made the text a little bit bigger, and we are just going to copy that. So properties, style sheet, and I, gra I did grab this off of a website and I made a couple minor changes, I think, but we'll just highlight and copy, cancel, get back to my main layout. And there we're gonna select our YouTube chat. We'll go to properties. And this is again, this is one of those things that we can make this even bigger. So we'll get rid of everything in there, paste in our style sheet. And this just changes the way it looks. And some of the things that it's doing, I don't, I'm not gonna go through everything here. I am not a CSS expert. Um, I am fami somewhat familiar with it, but we will just take a look at a few of these things and give you an idea of what you're looking at. So, oh, hey, look at that. Pause it. You can go right there, bitbucket.org. Frosthaven, YouTube chat, OBS styles, or just search uh, Frosthaven, YouTube, OBS might be the three keywords that you need. Um, and then if you take a look at uh, CSS, there's a lot of CSS playgrounds out there, sandboxes, um, you name it. So anywho, so what is he doing with this? Uh, we are setting the font. So for the message, the author name, all that junk, we're using font family, font family, Montserrat, whatever that is, font size 28, line height to 25, letter spacing 2, uh, author name, we are cutting that down to 20px. So I want to actually make that a little tiny bit bigger. So let's make that 22, line height of 22. Colors, uh, this is setting the what colors the fonts are going to be. Um, the message colors, I don't know what the, let's see, what is that, Delta 3, Delta 7, Delta Alpha. That's just kind of a gray, little almost white, not quite white, but close. Um, the author name color, same thing. And you can go through and you can play with all this stuff and get to where it looks like what you want. Or you can use one of those third-party sites um, that lets you do that. I think Stream, was it Streamlabs? I forget who it is. Maybe George can comment on the uh, on the video and with a link to the site that he uses. But anyways, let's hit OK there. And you see that immediately it refreshes and gets rid of all the stuff. It hid the the chat entry, the notice, the top chat selector, because we can't interact with this while we're sh while we're streaming, so we're not even going to bother. Now, here's something else that's really fun with the YouTube live chat and the browser docs in um, OBS. So come back to YouTube for a moment, because I cleared my clipboard, so we we'll have to pull that again, pop out the chat. Highlight, right click, copy, get rid of that, minimize that, and YouTube chat. And here's one of the things, couple tricks in here. So we're gonna paste that in there. So this section right here, that little bit right there is the video ID, all right? That is critical, we have to have that. This section, is just telling the web browser or telling YouTube that this is in a pop-out chat and it helps it figure out exactly how to deal with that. We don't need that anymore. So we can get rid of that. And there's the live chat. So this part right here with the live chat. In fact, you know what? Oh, I forgot I could do that with the keyboard too. Um, hopefully this is readable for you guys. This is not super clear for me. Anyways, so there's the live chat portion. There's the URL, studio.youtube.com. But we want to change this studio to gaming. 
And what that does is that changes the style sheet that it uses, puts it into dark mode, just makes it a little bit more readable on your screen. So let's apply that. And close. Let's see, Alt Escape. Nope, Control Escape. Win Escape. Hey, there we got our zoom out. Oh, hey, I don't want that. I don't want that. What do I want? There's that, okay. So now, where, where do we just do that? We did that in Docs, Custom Browser Docs. We have a doc called YouTube Chat. We set the URL. And in the future, all you have to do is just copy and change this video ID number. That way you don't have to worry about changing all the rest of that URL. Just copy that video um, ID and we're ready to go. So now we go to View, Docs, YouTube Chat right there. And look at that, put that right there and it's, it's, it's just like it was in the browser. And we can say something. And we are not live streaming yet. However, stop virtual camera. I don't even know why that virtual cam camera was running. Anyways, uh, we are not streaming, but we are ready to stream. And you can start doing YouTube chat or the, uh, yeah, the live chat on the YouTube um, starts as soon as you do the setup. So uh, just a test message. And we wait just a few seconds and it should pop up in our stream. It should pop up here. Just a moment. Come on, baby. You can do it. There it is. CC.7 out. Just a test message. And let's do another one. All right, let's see. This, and I don't know why I'm worried about typos and spelling because it's not anything that we care about. So another message, but this time, All right, with a lot more words so we can see how the line wrapping looks and all that jazz. And once again, this is all, for whatever reason, YouTube takes a long time for these to show up. And that's why when you guys do your, you do your live chat um, on the LFC or other channels and whatnot, it, it can take quite a while to just for the, the streamer, the live streamer, the guys doing the stream, takes a while for that to show up on his screen and then YouTube itself on the live stream has another five to ten second delay so it might you could put your message in there and it could be 30 seconds before you see it and anybody even responds to it and then of course you're so busy you know your streamer is so busy talking about what he's talking about that he doesn't pay any attention to the incoming messages at least that's my problem all right so there's our YouTube live chat incorporated with the uh, OBS and the main layout and all that stuff. And all right, so now we still got this black bar over here. What can we do there? Well, we could, if we wanted to, we could make our YouTube chat area bigger. Uh, we could put our gauges down here. Let's see, let's put our stats, let's put some of the, some of the gauges from the stats page in here. So how do we do that? Once again, we're going to copy our KPI sheet. Copy. And once again, I need more room to work here a little bit. We're going to paste a reference. Right click, group the selected items. Call it KPI gauges. Minimize that and put that right there below the shooter history. And let's grab these gauges and see if we can get them stuffed into place. So once again, we select our source, go to filters. We're going to add a filter to the crop pad. And again, there are other ways to do it. I prefer this because it it just it, it helps lock it into what you where you want it to be. You're not constantly having to fiddle with it. All right, so left to the gauges is probably going to be about 400. Oh, wow. So 
700 that works 300 on top uh 400 500 on the left bottom is oh i don't even know what um 800 Eight, that that works for a start all right so let's go ahead and kick this bottom up some more let's kick get rid of that magenta there on the right and we'll just keep going till we're happy with it all and get rid of the magenta on the left Now on this screen, since we have the board that's already telling us, you know, ho, oh, how many come out sevens do we have and 0.7 outs and the SOR and the S SRR, maybe we don't want these last three gauges. So let's go ahead and, and whack those. Um, 800. There's 900, 950, 975, 1,000. How about 1,000? That'll work. So let's kick that up. Get rid of the last of that bit there. That'll make those a little more readable. Let's get a little bit more off the bottom. And that looks good. Notice that's with a black background. Um, you can go back into your, K your, your copy of your KPI sheet and change it back to the magenta so that it's transparent. Um, in fact, I just might do that. Let's see, KPI gauges, filters. I'm going to turn that filter off for a moment. Close that KPI sheet. In fact, let's get rid of all this other nonsense. And I want to right click and interact. And let's see, little menus right there. We're going to edit the chart. And doing this through OBS is not, not exactly ideal. It's not exactly readable, but I know where I'm looking, so we can we can get through this just fine. So we'll just change these background colors to magenta on all these gauges. So it's the background color, border color, everything to magenta so that we can hide it. Magenta. Magenta, magenta, magenta. Oh my, that's a lot of a lot of clicking here. So, don't be afraid to come in here and play with the KPI. Don't be afraid to come in and see, uh, you know, customize it to suit your needs. Worst thing that's going to happen is you're going to blow it up, and then you have to grab another copy from me. Not a big deal. Always going to have a copy available, uh, so we can do all that. And the other thing I want to do here while we're in here, and I'm holding the control key down while I'm clicking on all these things, I'm just going to raise that up a bit <clears throat> to get it off this other part of the graph. So I'm going to use the uh, this graph here elsewhere later. All right, so that should be good. So we're done interacting with this click off my gauges there's that there's that so now we come back into filters turn our oh wrong item kpi gauges come back in here to filters turn our crop pad back on now you notice because i moved those on the original source i moved those gauges so now we have to adjust our crop and pad a little bit not a big deal so we are going to now, what did I just do? We're going to leave ourselves a couple of pixels, top, bottom, left, and right. That's good. Bring the bottom up some. And that looks good. Now, we need to add another filter. This time, we're going to do the chroma key. There's chroma key. OK. And the default for chroma key is green. We're going to change that color type to magenta. 
Now with the magenta, when we did that, you notice that it's hiding the red too. And it's because red is fairly close to magenta as far as a computer is concerned. So we're gonna turn the similarity down um, probably about, no, play with the slider. You see we're seeing a little bit of the magenta in the edges. We wanna get that and make it nice and sharp without getting too much. And looks like about 226, 225 is gonna work well for for our purposes on this particular item. So we'll go ahead and hit close there. And look at that, now we have our gauges. Let's turn everything else back on. There's YouTube chat. Whoa, how do I get two chats in here? Chat, chat, and YouTube chat. I don't know how I did that. Let's get rid of that one. All right. Um, Turn the audio. I don't know why I hid the audio, but that's all right. There's our board back. There's our KPI history is back. And the shooter history is back. And then, of course, this box is YouTube chat. Our gauges are here. They're hidden behind everything else. So let's just grab them, drag them down to where we want them. And that actually looks pretty good right there. So with these gauges here, and we could put them anywhere there. Again, we got rid of the black background, change it to magenta, make it transparent. And there's our gauges. And we still have a few things here that we can add in. Um, yeah, a little bit of, still got a little bit of screen real estate to play with. We could take our shooter history and move it down here. Right there. And if we did that, we would have to resize it a little bit. Um, or maybe just make it roll off, make that, let's see, shooter history. That, let's see, turn off the overhead camera. Let's see what the shooter screen would look like. So that's not too bad. So let's go back to our main layout. Let's take this transform. We're going to take our video source overhead camera. I'll show that again so you see what I'm doing. We got it selected. You see the red box around it. So right click, go to transform, copy transform. All right. So that transform is copied. Let's go ahead and hide that again. And go back to shooter one. Select our video source of overhead camera. Right click, go to transform and paste that transform. So there, now that transform is right there, it's on the inside and we can actually now put that on top because, because now we're resizing it to such a way that it doesn't need to be, you know, the main layout doesn't need to be on top, it doesn't matter because we've made a space for it within the main layout. All right, so let's go to Shooter 2. Same thing, we'll right click, Transform, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, paste transform. Oop, I had the wrong item selected. Control Z to undo. So take the scene, transform, paste transform, and we'll move that up in order so that it is covering our trailing shooter history. <clears throat> shooter three, same thing. Well, this time we'll do move them up top first, right click, transform, paste transform, shooter four, select our shooters uh, video source, move to the top, right click, transform, paste transform, boom, and shooter five, move them to the top, right click, go to transform, paste transform, Boom, done. So, shooter one, shooter two, shooter three, shooter four, and shooter five. Now, when we did that, let's go back to the main layout. We don't need, we'll just leave that box there for now. Now, the YouTube chat, um, now we got this blank blank space up here. In fact, let's go ahead and show that so we can see that blank space. So the YouTube chat, and then we'll have this little bit of blank space up here. So we can do a couple things. We can go ahead and move the YouTube chat up there. 
And let's do a little bit more math. So let's take a look at transform. Edit the transform. Oh, come on. And we'll see that our starting position is 149. So once again, let's use our calculator. 1080 minus 149 equals 931. So let's edit that. Let's go to the properties of YouTube chat. And we will change that there to 931. Hit OK. And now our YouTube chat is going to be pretty much full height. The entire height of that screen. And that should be 100% readable on the Live Fantasy Crafts broadcast, our live stream. The gauges are there. Shooter history is there. We still have a little bit of space over here we can deal with. Uh, let's modify this just a hair. That looks good. And we have this little tiny bit of small space that's available. Um, you could put a logo down here. The YouTube watermark will end up being down here. Um, you can space this stuff out just a little, wee little bit. Just like that. And really, that looks pretty good. Um, absolutely usable for the for the live chat because again remember we're going to get rid of this source now we don't need that there for the main layout for the mock-up let's see wish to remove overhead camera yes and we are back to that and we go to shooter one and we'll see what it looks like go to shooter two and there's that let's and shooter three shooter four and again, I can also use my pre-program keys. And my overhead cam has audio that I want to get rid of. I don't know why that came back. Maybe I just never removed it. So again, with unwanted audio sources, turn your volume all the way down, mute it, lock it, and then hide it. So shooter one, shooter two, shooter three, shooter four, shooter five. And of course you might have a bunch more. I think George said he had 12 shooters once, plus several people on the virtual tables. I haven't seen it yet. That's pretty cool. Um, it'd be awesome to get back to doing, you know, 10, 12 shooters, um, get more participation in the live fantasy craps. So anyways, this tutorial, I think, is done. So we saw how to get the YouTube chat into your live stream and into a browser doc into your OBS. So now, as a host, you know whether whether I'm hosting, uh, you know, actual live fantasy craps or just doing solo practice, I can. I've got my entry stuff right here. I've got my chat there. This chat here will respond a little bit faster than the chat on the stream. So I can see the chat. I can interact with the chat. And add that stuff in there. Click right back over here. And I'm not having to worry about switching screens or switching windows on a single screen. This actually makes this whole thing pretty manageable on a single screen. Now, having two or even three screens can really help things because, like, one of the things we can't watch here are the YouTube stats. Um, when you're streaming, YouTube is going to come down here and say, excellent connection, or it's going to say, we're not receiving enough, blah, blah, blah. And, it, you know, the stream quality, you can't watch that. You can't see how many viewers um, are actually watching the screen while you're in there. So, you know, having a second screen on your computer is definitely helpful. Now, since we've got this layout all like this, now look at your scenes. Your scenes are pretty crowded in there. One of the things I like to do here is I'll take this screens doc and I will actually drop it onto the YouTube chat doc. And what that does, because I don't really need to see the scenes all that much. And when I'm looking at the scenes, I'm not really don't care about the YouTube chat. But so you see, I got that many scenes just for 
five shooters. So if you got six for every shooter, you're going to add two more scenes plus, oh, stats. I'm going to have to make the uh, doing the stat screen. Actually, the stat screen is going to be pretty easy. Let's do that. Let's create a new scene. We'll call it stats. Boom there. And on the stats, we're going to add a source. And that source is going to be another scene. We'll add the main layout. There's that. And now we want to add a browser source. And actually, we don't want to add a browser source. We want to paste a reference to the browser source. So let's just grab one of these KPI browser sources. Right click, copy, back to the stats. Right click down here, paste a reference. And why did that make that that small? That's okay. It can be that small. Um, because we are going to group it. I did. I change. I changed something somewhere. Maybe not. I don't know. Let's go with it. If I break it, I break it, and I'll do it all over again. So we are going to go to. We need to group it first. Call it KPI stats. <clears throat> and we'll add a filter to it. Actually, we're going to add a couple filters. And the first filter we're going to do is a crop and pad. Because we want to get rid of lots of stuff. Ah, make it 400 top. 300, 275. 50, 225, let's just make it 200, right is going to be about 300, 275 maybe, that'll work. Bottom, let's whack 300, ooh, too much, 250, too much. That looks pretty good. Let's uh, let's make the top a little bit bigger. Um, at 175, too much, 180, 190 looks good. Let's take 10 more off, five more off the right, 280. And let's take 10 more off the left, 410. Good enough. So close that. There's that. That's what it's going to look like. Oh, we forgot to put the chroma key in there. So let's add the chroma key. Chroma, chroma, chroma key. OK. And again, change from green to magenta. Drop that similarity. We figured that about 220 something was a good a good number for that. So go ahead and close that. And that's where we're at there. Now we can stretch this into place. Good enough. Look at that. That is beautiful. And we are still getting an artifact. There's a little bit of magenta in there. I don't know if you can see it. So we need to adjust that a little bit more. So filters, chroma key. Kicked it up about 15, 20. Still there. Wow. How far up are we going to have to go with that? Uh, and this one looks like we're going to have to go up about 300. So I said different things will require slightly different settings. So you're just going to have to play with it and tweak it. But once you find a starting point, um, use that starting point over and over again and then tweak it until you get to what you need. All right. So there's our stat screen. And we can put that up at the bottom of the shooters just so that it's kind of in order in case we decide we want to use our mouse. There's stats, and with that, I'm going to close this tutorial. Um, so we've added the rest of our widgets. we got the YouTube chat. We've got gauges. We've got shooter history. We've got a stat screen. Oh, let's, uh, let's add a hotkey for the stat screen. How about that? So go to File and Settings, 
And once again, hotkeys will filter by scene because we don't want any, we don't care about any other hotkeys at the moment. Um, stats, let's add on my keyboard. I'm just going to push this button. It's a home button. It's actually Alt One of was what I have it mapped to. So we'll apply that and hit OK. So now I can do Shooter One, Shooter Two, Shooter Three, Shooter Four, Shooter Five. Hit my button for that and go to the stats. And then if it's G-Dub's turn, Shooter 3, I just go right back to Shooter 3. And actually, yours truly is up because that's what it says here on the board. All right, folks, I hope you learned something. Um, if you know an easier way and a better way, um, a cleaner way of doing these things, put them in the comments, let me know. If it's awesome and I like it, I might redo this video and do it your way. Who knows? I am always willing to do things better. Um, that's, uh, you know, the enemy of good is perfect, or perfect is the enemy of good, but you have to also accept that things can always be better. And that's what I always strive for in, in just about everything I do. I like to figure out ways to make things better, um, at least better for me, if not for other people. So until the next time, and next time I'm going to go into YouTube a little bit. I don't know what all I need to do. I need to figure that out. Um, setting up the live stream, getting the live stream going, scheduling it, setting thumbnails. Um, who knows? I might even spend some time and figure out how to do an intro and um, exit video um, scenes. And uh, yeah. So we'll see what happens there. It'll probably probably be next weekend before I get around to recording that and posting it, but we shall see. Until then, may the dice be kind, and we'll see you at Live Fantasy Craps.